What's up, readers? It's your boy. We have an amazing episode for you today. Tommy G, that dude is awesome. Just dropping knowledge everywhere. We have to get some announcements out of the way first. If you are banking fatties with us, you're cashing that check. Buy a shirt. It's a $20 shirt. Take some of those gains. Give back to the show. So hopefully we can give you some more picks, whether it's, you know, Anchor, Come Rocket, Chib, any stock, whatever it is, support the show. Crypto Cowboys tee, flying off the shelves. Cartoon logo tee, flying off the shelves. They're all going hot. So get them while you can. Also, I'm looking at the analytics over here. 60% of people who are watching the show, you're not subscribed. There's a little red button down there. That's all you have to do. It takes half a second. Just click that button. Even if you're listening right now, swipe up, go to YouTube, hit that button. All right, let's take five seconds. I'm going to make sure you do this, okay? Five seconds. All right, thanks. I know somebody didn't do it, but thanks. And another thing, we have Discord, Reddit, Instagram, Twitter. We're on it all, Facebook. We have everything. Follow us there. These socials, all these socials, all the links will be in the description below. Click that. It'll take you right to it. All right. So without further ado, enjoy this episode, guys. I thought Tommy was an amazing guest and uh, you guys, you guys are going to love him. Really, you're going to love him. So here's a clip. So, um, all right, Tommy, hey, just Neff, you got seven minutes. Okay, you know what? You're getting fucking queenie today, all right? We are grace. <laughs> you're doing dogs. good, though, Neff. You had two minutes five minutes ago. Now That's you right. Seven, so you're <laughs> Stop, dude. Please so, oh. Stop. You know, okay, do you guys of- want to get a chat you room together? And I mean, listen, fucking <laughs> I'm jerk down. each other off. I got four minutes, so I'm going. Okay, this is so, a chat roulette, okay. you two, Momo. Oh, so Let's answer, fucking go with the, the answer. And the other day, uh, is there any connection with Come Rock at there, little E? I can't remember. I can call you a friend at this point. Oh, really. god. Jesus Christ. We're, we're going to be finger popping each other's assholes soon. So, so yeah. getting, lonely, we are so getting lonely. a lot. Without further ado, let's get our shout outs out of the way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, if you have fun with that, I have to go. No, 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 I no, have no. to go. They involve I have to you. live a life. Okay. They involve I have you. to live a Listen, life. Listen, man, this is important because you have one you. minute, dude. Okay. <laughs> one minute. Cash daddy. Cash daddy. purposes only. You'd be an idiot to listen to anything these degenerates say. Invest at your own risk, do research, but seriously don't listen to these ass clowns. Now enjoy Cash Daddies. And welcome to Cash Daddies, where banking fatties. What a crazy week it's been, and it only got better since the beginning of this show. One one name has been asked to uh, be a guest, who constantly requested and uh, we got him here. But before, real quick, please welcome the Ass Ass Brothers, Howie Dewey and Chris Neff. How are you guys? Good, Crushing my man. It. Good. Crushing and it. the the OG Little <laughs> E, Evan Hand. How are you? Fantastic. Waiting on my uh, another Come Rocket bump. Boom. Come Rocket bumps. And our guest today, by popular demand, the people ask... We give the people what they want, okay? We give the people what they want and what they need. Please welcome to the show. Okay, let's go through some of these credits right now. Worked on Wall Street for nine years. 2015 won the Series XM Sports Radio Show of the Year Award, okay? Then got suspended. You know, that seems to be what happens here. Uh, 2016 grew the grew his co- gambling company from zero to $5 million in sales in 16 months, okay? Boom. And here's my favorite. Uh, well, no, there's a couple. Ban from Twitter, <laughs> IG, Facebook, Periscope. You got banned from Periscope, dude. Spotify, PayPal, and Stripe after Twitter explosion. And uh, and this one I'm excited about. Just won $134,000 on FanDuel uh, two weeks ago. Please welcome my good friend, Tommy G. How are you, brother? What up? Let's get weird. So, so Sam, you're saying I'm only here because the people wanted me, not because you wanted me? Is that Yeah, what no, to I totally want you. But the people have been demanding you. They have been demanding. Okay. By the way, I, I love I love Tommy's intro, but how do you gloss over um, bank robber? 
I yes, mean, that's that was my that was my biggest financial accomplishment. That is the most legit credit you can have on your resume. I By am far. pro. I am pro bank robber 100%. all the way. As long and, as somebody and... nobody dies at the bank, I'm all good. <laughs> <laughs> You can even die robbing the bank. I'm okay with that. As long as the tellers don't die and everyone gets out, I'm good with that, man. I'm and for the record, we did get away with it. One of my Cody's ratted. So I did accomplish it and succeed. That is an important part of that story. If you don't mind, and I'm sure you've told the story a million times, mm -hmm. can you just tell us how that went down? Because so many people don't, that we have a, a mix of fans and uh -huh. a lot of the cash dealers are like, wait a minute, this guy robbed a bank. Yes. And I said, yes, you will get to hear all about it. So can, <laughs> you, just, can you start with just that right That's there? Awesome. Because, because you were an inside, you were part of an inside team. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, it's almost better if I don't tell the story. Cause then I think I, they think I like gangstered up with a gun and came in with a mask <laughs> and just shot the place up. But no, I was actually working for the bank. So I was working for the, I was like 22 years old. I was a fucking kid. And I was a broke, you know, fucking dad left when he was little, he used to steal all the sneakers and clothes I wore. Just, we didn't have any money. So I was used to fucking just getting by. Uh, family got in some financial trouble. I tried to be a fucking hero. And uh, it's funny because now I own multiple gambling companies and I gamble for a living. But the way I thought I was going to solve the problem was to open up a bunch of $10,000 gambling lines because I used to run numbers for guys in Long Island. And uh, that just compiled the problem. Then I got beat up by the mafia, ribs broken, jaw broken, threatened to kill my family. That was fun. And uh, really, I had no other choice. So I said, fuck it, let's rob a bank. And uh, we got away with it. And then uh, my Indian co-defendant fucking decided to rat to prevent himself from getting- uh, Okay, dot or feather? Just dot, so we have dot, all the facts. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, he decided oh, so you to, didn't you didn't go in with like a paper bag over your No, head that's what I'm saying. That's why I hate telling a oh, story because dude, you know, when you tell the story, he oh, probably gosh. went in with he a fucking right address. He went in as a Native American. They went in as a village people. Bro. I was that's Pocahontas. Story was. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen Quick Change? It was like that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm giving you the clip though version. So uh, <laughs> got away with it. And then uh, he didn't show up for work one day and I knew something was up. And went out to get some pizza, came back, went to leave work, said goodbye to the cops who were, you know, obviously manning the doors because we'd just been robbed fucking five days ago by yours truly. And uh, I walked outside to a bunch of fucking guns in my face, was told to get on the ground and walked into the police station to him sitting there crying to his parents and uh, realized I was going to do a couple of years in jail. He must have been like, I cannot believe I did this. I did not <laughs> want to do this. The funny is me. It you did it. Oh, of course. It was it was it was the fucking I, lost I was the, much, much money on cricket game. Cricket <laughs> game. And, and just so we're aware, what what was it? Two hundred K? I think it was two hundred forty or two twenty or something. like. It was actually at the time I'm trying to find the article. It was actually the largest bank robbery in the county and I believe in the state. So now, did you have to pay taxes on top of restitution when you gave it back? I don't really know because I went into so much debt being in jail that I think everything just became just a negative number across the balance sheet, student loans, everything. So, uh, dude, I wish I would have known you because I've been like, dude, you still owe me that 20 grand, right? You're like, Fuck, yeah. <laughs> I'll fucking get it to you. I'll okay, fucking get listen, it to you. How loyal is that? If I owe you money, I'll rob a fucking bank to get it to you. Dude, that's, that's, that's fucking love right there, dude. Yeah, that's why you. That's nice. You're one of the best yeah. to do it. And then right. I came out and got a job in the stock market and ran a trading school for fucking 10 years in the finance yeah. world. So, so you uh, went to le legal thievery. That's where yeah. you went to. Yeah. So now yeah, I was just right. exactly. So uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I Where'd love you work it. Down Wall Street. Uh, I worked down right. Uh, you know what a gold bull is? Yeah. Yeah. So our office was there. It was our trading school that we ran down there. And uh, I worked at a couple prop shops when I was younger, but it was mostly just day trading futures. Uh, we had a little fucking day trading school and we did some shit all over the country. So it was uh, it's fun. I'm more of a day trader than an investor, though. So you were day trading futures. You were day trading commodities and stuff like that. Yeah, mostly the minis, the S&P minis, the minis, NASDAQ, you know. Yeah. So a lot of the a lot of the tech stuff. Yeah. Those were the days, man. I mean, crude Those oil were the was days you know, running nothing, and gunning. Yeah. Tell us huh? about running numbers, uh, because a lot of people aren't familiar with that term if they're not in the gambling industry. Uh, right. Tell so us what that was all about. So when you're a when you're a street kid from North Jersey, you basically are on as and as, as an Italian, you're pretty much automatically tied into the bookmaking operations by blood. So uh, grandfather was tied in, and basically I was like the middleman. I'd go get accounts for them. I'd go find people that wanted to open accounts with the big 
you know, mafia guys in Long Island. And I was basically a runner. So when they owed money, I would just pick up the money and bring it to the guys and I'd get a little cut of it. I'm 18 years old, 19 years old. So they'd break me off a few hundred bucks, sometimes a thousand bucks if the guy lost big. And then if there was a problem collecting, I would go get the big guys that were six, five, you know, monsters. I would go with them, but I wasn't the enforcer. So I was the runner. So I was the one that was you basically, were basically Henry Hill. And for my entire life, I always wanted to be a gangster. Yeah, you kind were, of. Yeah. For well, hanging yeah. around the candy stores, you grew up yes. in this lifestyle. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Now, do you guys, uh, I think nephew might know him, Brant Tobler. Do you know Brant yes, Tobler? I do. Brant Tobler is a great story. He was running for heavy betters in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And one day his dad basically robbed him and he was fucked. So him and his brother, and he did this show story on television. I'm like, I, I don't know if there's a um a time limit on that. What's that called when you can't uh, uh you know, statute, statute of limitations? limitations. Yeah, on uh, yeah. attempted murder, but they attempted to murder their dad, which is like <laughs> insanity, right? And he told it on our gotcha. Shafir show. I'm like, oh. I mean, like, dude, I think that's called evidence you just submitted. Yeah. But yeah, dude, he was running money like that for sure. What so do you guys think now? with all the gambling online, legal everywhere. A lot of people think you're going to start seeing gambling places in arenas like Staples Center, right? Mm -hmm. You'll be able to bet on halftime right there and all that stuff. Oh, well, Sam, I was talking earlier, you know, he, he, he was saying he lived in uh, North Jersey. The reason I'm so familiar about like, how to get to North Jersey is because if I want to place a bet, if I'm in a sports bar in New York City, I can't do it unless I go offshore. It's a pain in the ass. But what I can do is I can, I can walk 50 feet. I can get on that New Jersey train. And literally when that door opens in Hoboken, I can walk upstairs, open my phone up and it's totally legal, baby. Yep. You can sit, you can sit at a uh, at giant stadium and you can sit there and uh, with a 50th row and just put bets on your jets. You can uh, you should come once they stop this COVID mask shit because I won't go there since. I basically got my mail sent to the FanDuel VIP area, the fucking sports book in there. So if you ever yeah, come by, it's, we live, it's we live there. Dude, I went to go see the uh, Clippers versus Knicks today. And you went to the game? I, I tried. You need to have a either your vaccine card or a positive test to get into the state. I got system. I got one for you if you need it. I'm okay. not kidding. I'm not kidding. Like I'm dead I, I, three people say they're getting it for me. No, I'm I fucking robbed a bank to pay a gambling debt. When I say something, I'll fucking mean it. <laughs> <laughs> you can, my word you is can my bond trip. <laughs> if you need it, I got it. He's got a vax card. Neff, have you got your have you gotten your uh vax yet? I got half of it, but I'm with Howie, man. I'm gonna play by the rules because I don't want to miss out on you know the so bullshit. you want full blown aids. Yeah. He already yeah. had it. Yeah. He's not okay. Can't get it twice, buddy. Can't, get it, can't, can't double get it down twice. on it. You stopped no. that three years ago. <laughs> oh, Howie, did we ever talk about you going get your your shots and then you just fainting? You're like, ha ha, I'm going to get shots. Oh, the government, blah blah blah. Next picture is like, yeah, I woke up here, ow, my pants <laughs> off, I'm bleeding out my asshole. No, the worst. The worst part was, I remember being on a gurney. I got a problem with needles, man, and it's just I just pass out. That's all there is for like five minutes. And, and they, they're gurying me across like 500 people. And everybody's looking at me like, holy shit, look what the Vax just did to him. Like, he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, I literally woke up in a tent, gripping the steel bar, just yelling at these, like, please just get it over with. Hurry. And the lady said, sweetie, we did this five minutes ago. And yeah. They're like, I'm pouring sweat. It was embarrassing, man. Did they but put I got, you in I the children's the hospital? Yeah. <laughs> Right I'm assuming door, you don't, you the, don't have any no tattoos or anything. I'm assuming that now. I got the Javits Center. I woke up. Everything seems good. You know, I can't. I, I think they put a chip in me, though. I heard something ticking in my arm. Well, yeah, for sure. And that's the joke that everybody's doing now. Oh, it's conspiracy theory. Anyways, let's get into. So I want to get into you. You're killing in FanDuel, huh? Yeah, I mean, I've been. Mean, that's how that's how I got my start when I left uh, the trading school and Wall Street and all that shit. It was. Uh, I wanted to just gamble for a living. So I started with FanDuel in 2012. I was like one of, I was back there when like the biggest prize pools were like, that's 5, when literally it was just two dudes pointing guns at each other. Bro, it was fucking amazing. It was, it was yeah. literally free money because we were doing daily fantasy and people didn't even check weather. 
So you'd be playing guys for hundreds of dollars and they didn't even know the game was going to get rained out. Like there was just free money everywhere back then. I was making hundreds of thousands of dollars like a month sometimes. And that's what kind of jumped it off the New York post thing. And then the documentary, and then I started the radio show. And then I just parlayed it into a, a gambling company that I own now for deep bets.com. But I'll, I'll do that in a minute, but okay. the, uh, so yeah, FanDuel thing I've been doing for a long time. And I stopped doing the fantasy side for a couple of years when the sports betting became legal because basically betting on props, player props is the same as daily fantasy. So instead of compete with other comp people, I just compete with Vegas because their numbers are usually off. So yeah, so I got back into the fantasy literally three weeks ago. And in my second week, I hit for 134,000 in this fucking trip. So a little bit, little bit of luck. Like you got to get a little lucky to win those things. It's not just skill, but it was... Uh, what was the good. entry on that? Uh, that? Well, it was like 10 different tournaments. So it was it ran across the board from $1,600 entry down to, I think the lowest one was like 10 bucks. So what's your when you're when you're playing the whether it's FanDuel or DraftKings and you're you're playing this the, the fantasy, what are like your top two strategies? What are two important things that that players like me should probably know instead of just being like, hey, Luka Doncic, I like him, he's pretty good. Right, it, it, be... it's really hard to compete nowadays. Like I'm a Neanderthal, but I'm also a fucking math nerd. How you know you're you're a numbers guy too, so you, you get it. Yeah. So everything comes down to a math equation. Like there's, I still take the game into account, obviously, because I watch every game. But the fact is that there's probably about a 15 step process, which we give to the subscribers. And we basically give the picks out, right? So right. the people who sign up at the company, they don't have to think because we, we have optimizers and algorithms and all that that run it. But baseball is my main sport. So it's a lot of just identifying the pitchers that you want to target and target against. Once you get that, now you know which two or three teams you're on, and then it takes your research and you can narrow it down to the two or three players on said teams. But it really just mostly uh, the big thing for me, I think, is pitch type, because a lot of people don't go into that. They just look at lefty righty splits and shit like that. And if you look at certain players can't hit a slider, certain players can't hit a curveball. If you could start to dive down into the individual players and what pitches the pitcher features and what pitches they excel at it gives you that little bit of an edge that can, that can make it a little less random. Now, without being like another coach or manager, where the, where do you find that shit? It's yeah. It's, it's years. Like I have literally, I mean, I own a site that has 90% of this and I still have 10 other sites that I use for data. So it's, it's a nightmare. The hardest thing to start the season. That's what I've had a lot of six figure scores but they're very rarely in the first week or two. Cause in that first week or two, you don't even remember your process. It's so many different things that it would be impossible to explain, but little by little, what we do is we work with people and we teach them a little bit in week one, a little bit in week two. And then, you know, you got to give it a month or two, just like stock trading or anything else. You can't, you got to yeah. kind of play for fun at first and then, then worry about the money. It's What's just the get, gathering information. Wow. What's the biggest score you've ever had? Like on a, on a straight parlay, not uh, not a, you know, not a fantasy thing um, for a single bet. Yeah. Probably about on one bet or one day. So one bet, probably 80, 90,000, which, which is rare though. That's not that common. That was like a $10,000 four team parlay, which I never do. Like yeah. it was just, you know, you're on a heater and you're just letting fucking money fly. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but normally the, the, the gambling is a little more, uh, it sounds crazy to say, but a little more safer. Right. Because you have an edge on Vegas and the things that you're playing, the fantasy, there's so many variables that it makes it a little more risky. But, you know, I'm usually just going to get two to three times my money, one to three times my money on the individual bets. So not not many like hundred thousand dollar days in yeah. gambling. What are your games? Baseball and football? Do you do basketball as well? College basketball. I hate the NBA. I'm fucking terrible at it. Yes, I, exactly. I've, I've, I've exactly. I, I can't play a fucking sport where the players don't even care about their fucking like if they don't I, fucking I, care how bad, am i gonna dude. project them to care i i it's so hard to get behind teams now with all mm. this resting yeah. nobody can get momentum going and they don't care because their whole thing is extend this shit for as long as i can yep and if the nba doesn't implement something which is if you don't pay x number of games a year you you your salary goes to this 
Mm-hmm. This, they're done, dude. It's done. You can't pay people $40 million a year and then have them sitting down for games. It's just, it doesn't work like that, man. They want to play 20 years. And what you're doing is you're fucking all these young guys that could be getting into the league and getting a shot to play. And now they can't get in. They may not be hundred million dollar players, but they, they could play in the NBA for one season, go to Europe and make shit tons of money. Cause they played on a team. Like if you play on the Lakers and you make the playoffs and you're like an eight seed, but you get to play in that game, you go to Europe, you can bank that shit. Yep. But these guys just playing for fucking ever because they don't want to get hurt. I, dude, everybody can argue about LeBron James and we can do it all the time. But anybody says that guy's one of the greatest ever do it statistically, but he's going to leave the league in a worse place than they got it for yep. sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the thing about like versus the NBA and, and I'm the same way with Tommy, the NBA makes no sense. One team beats another team on a Wednesday night back to back. They should be tired. They come out. They win again by 30. It makes so college basketball. Yeah. If you watch it long enough, yeah. and I'm yeah. an ex-coach, I coached in college. College basketball is about matchups. When you got a certain well, you got a Syracuse who's lost four in a row, but they're playing Duke, who normally has good guards, but they don't this year. And the line is crazy. Duke minus 15. You know Syracuse is gonna lose by three or four yeah. and possibly win the game. Yeah. It, College basketball makes more sense when, 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 when coaches are matched because certain coaches own other coaches. They always beat them. The, I would say in order, it's baseball and college basketball, one and one A, and then football, you know, would be two or three, however you want to rank it. But college basketball is my favorite sport to bet. This year was tougher. This was my first year. where Cause I get, it was bizarro year. Yeah. It was a bizarro year. It did make sense. Year. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm, and I'm not saying this to be cocky. My subscribers and anyone in the chat will fucking tell you I am limited or banned from pretty much every legal sports book in America. Like I can't get more than $500 down on a sports book because of college basketball uh, and then pitcher props in baseball, except FanDuel because I've played like $10 million there. So they fucking let me do whatever I want. But so do you have any runners for you? No, no. Luckily, it's all legal now. I got to fix this camera it? in a minute. I was going to say, if you need the, it, you uh, let me know. The big thing is, though, this year, just to be honest, like college basketball for me, I mean, I was up, but nothing like what I'm usually up. I think the fans not being there, it's the most fan-centric sport of all of them, that the fans not being there just well, threw everything dude, off. I mean, that's a big reason Duke goes to shit is because mm-hmm. they don't have uh, that home court advantage. Well, and, you know, say whatever you want about LeBron James, and I know I'm the one talking <laughs> shit, but I do believe that last year's, Last year's championship was one of the hardest championships to get because if you saw all the rookies were killing it in the bubble because they all got used to those rims. There was no, there was like team, like the Phoenix Suns who were great this year because they got Chris Paul. But last year they were lighting everybody up in the bubble because there was no fans getting on them. They, they, you know, that usually breaks weak teams. So it was just, a complete. I mean, look at Duke. Look at Kentucky. Kentucky but, had their first losing season in decades because they didn't have that home court cooking. But, but Tommy, how about college basketball? I will say this. I've been watching college basketball, I don't know, 40 years. This Before was the, they let black people play, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> back when Kentucky had a problem with it. Back when, uh, yeah. But, but this was the first year I can honestly say I have never in my life seen more blowouts Wow, that's like, what the problem was. You would see a line where the line was two and a half and the team loses by 36. And it but, happened every night. I always tell everyone, you can tell how good a gambler someone is by what their favorite sport to bet on is. If their answer is football, they're a fucking idiot, right? It's the sharpest lines. It's the toughest. It's toughest. Yeah, it's fun, but it's the least profitable for any yeah. professional gambler. If they say about tennis, WNBA, was that WM, the more obscure to dude, I make so much money betting fucking Russian La Liga ping pong at three in the morning. <laughs> you have no idea. Like the more obscure the fucking sport is, and NCAA basketball is one of them where most people lose. So by how he's saying that he that's his favorite, you could tell yeah. he's sharp immediately. And I'm not blowing you just because you're on Tommy, here. But can you do me a favor? Can you talk to FanDuel and get my football league on there to help us get some heat going? Yeah, I'm a part want, owner in the A7FL. Very proud of that. Uh, you know, he doesn't even the- know his team. Yeah. He doesn't even I, know the team. My name. team is the Silk 
city monsters. All right. Yeah. So don't worry about it, dog. <laughs> That's my favorite team. If we can get it on there, get a little heat going. Okay. Yeah, you're fucking, think- the last time I fucking hung out with Tripoli, he's doing stand up and talking conspiracies. Two months later, he's got a financial show and he owns a fucking football team. Yeah, there wow. you go. <laughs> diversify, brother. Yeah. Decentralize <laughs> and diversify. So let's talk to FanDuel. Let's set that up. I, I can do it. Out. Yeah, I got you. Okay, How let's you get need, it going. You know that. Yeah, I'm all about. See, Chris, that's called friendship right there. Yeah, okay. I mean, I had, had a good run, I had a good run uh, a few weekends ago playing uh, <laughs> Irish darts. Uh-huh. It's three in the morning. You can actually bet. It's like Tommy O'Sullivan and fucking Brendan uh, Shaughnessy. You can bet those guys at like three in the morning. They're just slinging darts over in Ireland. Dude, how I, I am going to teach you Russian ping pong. It is the you do nothing but bet plus five hundred dogs who are down a set. They over. If there's math to it, but bro, you will fucking smash it. You ready for this? I gotta find the tweet. There was a tweet that in Denver, where all the DFS players are, for some fucking reason, all the best DFS players in the world What's live in Denver. Daily fantasy. D- Daily fantasy sports. So the yeah. DraftKings fan bullshit. They all live in fucking Denver, and they all went to Colorado State. It's like this fucking mafia of fucking nerds that, like, all are there. They yeah. said there was more money bet on Russian La Liga ping pong in January of this year than UFC and hockey combined. Like I that's totally how you believe that there is money to be made in that. That tells you that tells you that there's a couple of fellas out in Coney Island named K- fucking Khrushchev that uh, <laughs> they're they're definitely staking players. And it's Russian, so if it, so you know it's fixed. So yeah. if you can just see the, you can see the fix. You can tell. Have you it. ever have you ever had inside information on a a game? Um, uh, any shaving, anything like yes, that? Yes, actually, yes. You I love asking yeah. these questions, yeah. don't you, bro? You know why? You, you know love why? Asking I don't. These questions. I do not do softball interviews okay yeah. All right. <laughs> somebody's Hi. got love to the number one sh- show to get fucking a call from the fbi chris <laughs> go ahead hey hey d- hey time out twink sinker here's what you don't fucking understand there is a statute of limitations on illegal betting activity and if if tommy knows his shit he could talk about certain i mean shit. obviously everything i know is from eight years ago correct so, yeah. correct so oh, okay. can you can oh, you enlighten okay. us on your biggest score uh, with inside information <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't big scores but i had uh, a friend of a friend who knew i mean first of all i went to villanova so when i that's long ago i'm 40 years old so that yeah. shit was 20 years ago i could talk about that Steve uh, Tim Tom Lapis years. That's when I was there. I fucking was there when they sucked and then they get fucking right, right when I leave. But uh, Tim Thomas and my boy Chaz played on the team and Tim Thomas used to throw games. Fucking Kerry Kittles was really? there. Yeah, yeah, dude, we knew like we didn't know, but we knew, right? Like my boy would come to me and he'd be like, bet against us tonight. And I'm yeah. like, why? Just, just trust me. Like he'd zip his mouth and every. And it was obviously we Tim Thomas. They yesterday. both got they both got drafted. Yeah, I mean, he went to Patterson Catholic, which is right here, and you know he grew up broke. I know that for a fact. And he walked yeah. into Villanova with like three fucking black All Range right. Rovers and shit. So yeah, a lot of these games are fixed. I know another kid who at a small school. So the problem was that it was always one of those like circled games or extra games, so you can't yeah. get much money down on it. Yeah. But uh, we had a kid there who my boy knew who literally would throw the games for some guy for like a thousand dollars. And that's what I try to explain to these people. I'm like, guys, I know these games are fixed. Most of them. You just have to read like how he said before, you could read the line and tell where the fix is on most games. And this year you're college, telling us this because Sam yeah. doesn't believe this. Happens. No, I know no, for a fact, I do believe it happens. Yeah. I just didn't hear any of this. So if they it ask happens. me to testify, I don't know what you guys are talking yeah. about. Yeah. The and, last and again, thing they is, want is you doing 20 minutes of stand up in a fucking courtroom. Okay. <laughs> They're not going to fucking call uh, you. But, fuck yeah. nuts. Okay. <laughs> I'm 17 and three in traffic court. I cross examine <laughs> police officers. I win all the time. Okay. Don't ever come at me with that shit. I am. I murder in traffic court. You got an 85% win rate in traffic Dude, court. That's this is true, impressive. Tommy. People who listen to me know this to be true. I'd be a fucking traffic camera. That's how good I am, okay? Man versus machine. Machine loses. Triple walks out of there. Dude, one time I cross-examined the cop. The fucking judge yells mercy, and the whole place explodes. I'm high-fiving Russians, fucking uh-huh. Mexicans. Just screaming, respect me. 
Respect me. Yeah, I, took business law. I took business law at UNLV. Yeah. You there wanna, we go. Winner, you want a fun you want a fun fact on the, the NBA fixes, how obvious it is? Yes. You know Tim Donahue, right? Yeah. Yes. All right. Obviously, he said when they asked him how many refs gamble, not bet on the games, he said hundred percent, right? Any of you guys who are gambled, I love drugs and pussy. So if I'm in the wrong he state does, of mind. Dude. I'm going to do all the drugs, alcohol, and pussy that's in front of me, right? So if you gamble, you're a gambler, right? So if you have an opportunity, you're going to take it, just like a drug addict would or someone who's addicted to sex or whatever. There's an interesting thing about Tim Donahue, though. Not only did he say that that shit was fixed, obviously, and it was proven that it was fixed, but did you know he went to the same high school as Joe Crawford, Mike Callahan, and Ed Malloy? Wow. Yeah. Three yeah, of the all, biggest yeah. referees in the history of the NBA yes. who've refed the most championship games all went to the same high school at different yeah. times, ten, like eight years apart. You're telling me yeah. there's not some sort of fucking godfather yeah. sitting out there at Cardinal That's O'Hara? Some Jeffrey Epstein shit right yeah, there. Yeah, dude. they're recruiting these motherfuckers and cycling them <laughs> in every sure. 10 years. Yeah. So no, uh, well, that's that's a known thing. Like if you look at the NCAA, um, I'm not going to mention names, but there's the two of the lead refs that have been, they've done like Carl 30 Malone. final fours. They, they, there's about seven or eight of them. They're all from upstate New York and they've been doing the same finals, eight final mm-hmm. fours for the past 35 years. Same guys. Yeah. I know. I know a kid right now who's playing uh, again, not, I don't know him. He's an acquaintance, but not fixing games, but he literally said to us at the book actually one day, that, yeah, we know what the score is at the end of the games, and sometimes we want to cover it, and sometimes we want to fuck the people. Oh, my like, God. He, yeah, I he, do not know any of this. Yeah. Do not call me. I no. have Armenian lawyers. No. I, this cat's going to get subpoenaed. The cat's <laughs> going to have to show up. Miss Mom's going to have to testify. Maybe Everybody's going to have them bringing me on. <laughs> hey, Tommy, uh, we w- want to stay a little topical. I mean, I think we uh, know that you know uh, you have an opinion on Doge. Uh, my fear is that this crypto market that we're seeing exploding, especially with NFTs, is ripe for money laundering and the mafia oh, is yeah. Yeah. way yeah. too smart. We know that they've pumped and dumped penny stocks in the past. Do you think that's occurring in the crypto world specifically with organized crime? Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, I, I think this is even bigger picture. We won't go too deep into the conspiracy side because this isn't a conspiracy show. Do but it. the whole um, pussification of this country, the whole one gender shit that they're putting out. I mean, look at all the shit that everyone, especially men, are investing in. We're investing in kitties and doggies and crypto punks and shit that your little children would be playing with. Right. So it's the same thing we talk about with the Snapchat filters, how they're basically just turning everyone towards this world of pedophilia, sexual, one gender, right? So they're also taking away everything that's alpha, right? You're looking at men. I'm looking at guys who are professional sports gamblers with fucking bored apes as their avatar on Twitter, right? Like they're pussifying everyone. And you think about it from a money laundering perspective, it makes total sense. If you think about it from Illuminati, Cabal, NWO perspective, what are they doing? They're taking all the money out of society. They're taking all the dumbest people in society because it's 90% millennials that are doing this shit. They're getting to invest all their cash, all their money, all their assets into something that they don't even fucking understand. Fucking Dogecoin started at a goddamn joke in 2013. And now people have their life savings in it, right? So they're funneling all this money into this thing that they're telling you is completely safe and the government can't touch it and they can't do this. Meanwhile, it's being run by the mouth of Elon Musk and Mark Cuban and some of the fucking totally weirdest, agree. most fucked up people in the world. So I have a feeling that one day you're just going to see a fucking switch get flipped and everyone's going to be like, where'd all my money go? I thought that couldn't happen. Like you saw with Robin Hood with GameStop, like you saw with Robin Hood again last That's night. Right. Like these people just don't fully understand the depths and Howie, you probably understand it. And those of you guys that have been in the financial <laughs> world, there's so much shit going on nine layers deeper than what you're seeing. Right. That I think this is all just a game to basically take money out of the equation and make everyone poor I'm looking at nothing but millennials who don't want to work. They just want to invest in in crypto, which is great because they're making money doing it. But that's what you do as a drug dealer. You give them a little bit of drugs. You get them addicted. You give them a good experience. You keep doing it until they're addicted. And then you got a client forever. I think Doge and Bitcoin and all this is kind of just phase one of this test. NBA top shot. They're just getting these kids addicted and reeled in. And then the whale is going to come in and they're going to wipe them all out at some point. In the next I think, I think that, that that's definitely possible. 
That's why I'm like, get in now. Yeah. Turn your turn your Flip it. digital Flip it. to physical, dude. Yep. I'm really thinking about taking some of my Bitcoin right now and putting it down on a house. I, yeah. Because that yeah. is ultimately my By guns, goal, by gold. I'm like, yeah, well, guns, gold. And and physical, dude. I yeah, mean, it's a property. Is- it's a property, Sam. It's a tangible asset. Yes. Yeah, that's my whole thing. So I just gotta decide if I want to stay in LA. I want to go to Nashville, dude. Pit, let, to- I'm moving out of here. Let me know. I will go where you go, and we'll take over the world. But you have to understand when I shit on Doge and when I shit on all this. Nonsense, I'm thinking Tennessee, dude. I love I, I mean, love Nashville. Dude, yeah. They just got rid of uh uh. uh was that race? Uh, uh, something racism? Race? No, not <laughs> yeah, racism. Yeah, they banned no more racism. What is what is that? Uh, the the uh, oh, critical race theory. They got rid of that. They they're not teaching in school anymore. You don't even have to get a permit for a gun now. You could just carry a gun around. So those You're are missing two- by far the single most important thing about Nashville. Barbecue. Wow. It's the bachelorette capital of the fucking world. I see it's getting on your head dude, over there. I'm 48, bro. I bro, just want to sleep. Dude, Listen, rip. dude. Just I look rip. at chicks. You have to look I'm out like, your window and just see different ho- pussy whole everywhere. same problems right now. You and Evan can make runs on that. I shit. went two years ago. Ooh. Ev, it's better than Vegas. It's not even close. Because every the girls there aren't after your fucking money. They're, they're all, just yeah. fucking drunk and want dick. It's like incredible. The bar it's where they're barbecue and beaver. And they're flying in and flying out. There's a bachelorette party every day at every bar. So like it's they're only there for five days. And it's perfect. <laughs> yeah, like we move there. We I bang a couple of chicks. They're gone right. in five days. Let's put it in motion. Let's go. I have me and you a rooming together. Yeah, I have my first roommate in 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine how that would go down? Yeah. So, so if, this week's been. Well, I want to talk to you, Tom, because we do. You know, we do a lot of crypto talk here, and I know we we're just getting into it. But I also know you're a stock guy, and. What is your take on everything? Because, you know, you got these this new money coming in and crypto seems to be paying a lot more quicker right. than, yeah. the, than the stock market. I mean, as you know, you might not know this. I own part of the UFC, too. I'm a sports league fucking are whale, you, brother. Are, do you invest or do you just name drop now? I can't Damn, figure man. I name <laughs> drop my investments, brother. That's how I fucking roll. $10. No. I'm Dana dollars. White boss thank you <laughs> so um which is endeavors doing great for me mm-hmm. it's the one stock that i have that is doing well and you've the owned other it for five like, days you've owned what? it for fi- you've owned it for five days hey dude real quick as you told me to go gra- and, and listen you told me grab coinbase that instantly went to anal okay i was getting mm-hmm. fucked in the ass from the and i told moment you i, I told there. you not to buy it grandpa said don't all? buy it and it's well, my and pick of the week listen my pick of the week after this doge fiasco because i gotta i'll give you a pick right now and then we'll answer the question right now we'll do it at the end we do it at the end all right right, so keep me on for that remind me so my whole thing is for the whole ride Ah, i guess they're here for the whole ride we have we have 30 minutes you gotta wait for shout outs i got my fucking coke dealer coming in like an hour yeah evan you can't go anywhere you're right. a kid. You have now to use your Okay. Now Damn you can't it. leave. Everyone over 40 gets to leave. Okay. <laughs> so here's worry. how we're gonna do it, dude. <laughs> Are you 40 yet, Tommy? I'm 42, bro. I just okay, so you can yeah. go too, dude. You've earned it. You've done nah, I'm gonna of, stay and hang enough out. Enough laps around. I wanna look at that. Stuff. I wanna look at that pretty face for the next hour and a half. Yeah, there we go. Dude, everyone loves Evan. Everybody so loves Evan. I'm talking about you. Evan's this, oh, bitch. thanks, dude. Uh no, it's so, important. Uh Neff has to shout out uh Snow clit six nine four one. You know what? Time out. Time out. I'm gonna give him out. some really good advice I'm on. I'm gonna Beaver get him out clit. right now, just so it doesn't feel like an end of the shout out. No, it's gonna segment. be end of the show, me. man. No, 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 no. It's a new segment. I haven't even told you what the new segment is. Well, we gotta it's... vote on these segments, <laughs> buddy. We can't have a vote if you got a fucking jam. Okay? Uh, okay, it's hard to get work done when somebody's <laughs> got to go align their first. Oh, how about the 9,000 texts you queens do left, all the time? You know how what? about putting a vote in that? <laughs> how about you go get your left ball aligned, all right, <laughs> with your fucking yoga, and then hey, we'll do the real that? work around here. Now, here, here's the deal. We do have a new segment on the show. It's called New Discord Reader Names, and we have four. So we want to welcome Milk Mommy's Prolapse to the Discord. <laughs> Paranoid P, Patch Reader, and Come Cannon Six by Nine. Welcome. Is there any chance one. any of those have vaginas? Any chance at all? <laughs> by the way, 
uh, E ran the math. We are at ninety seven point eight percent men. Um, no. Dude, my sports Discord trip, I have like forty to fifty hot chicks out of like. Yeah, you thousand. do have hot chicks. I Mo know, shows sure. in there. Yeah, gambling. Before they blew yeah. you up on Discord. By the way, they would blow Tommy up on Discord over and over and over again. And then after a while, they took mine first down. Then they took yeah. my second down. Now I'm done. My gambling one stays. The conspiracy one was great. That was like 70% chicks. But the, Can you uh, shout that out for us? Because uh, our readers will want to join that. What's that? What is the name of your Discord? Oh, so I so basically I'm not doing the conspiracy one right now just because it's shit's too hot and I need to get my company going. I can't get banned yeah, from every other fucking that. place in the world. But I do have a code that I had them make for your listeners. Hold on. So it's uh, it's sports betting and fantasy. I do a Discord. We have a 24-hour Discord chat. I do voice chats pretty much five nights a week. Teach people how to gamble. If you use the code, uh, what's the one? Cash 100, you get a free week. So it will auto-renew. So at the end of the week, if you don't want to continue it, just, just click the button and you could unsubscribe to it. But it's a free week of the gambling. And the Discord in there is where I live. I'm in there like 16 hours a day. Just put oh, So you're the on. Chris Neff of your Discord? Yes, basically where, what is what is the name of it just so they know where to go uh it's four deep bets.com so number four deep as in deep dot bets.com four deep bets we're changing it and doing a new website and everything but for right now that's what it is so number four deep bets.com just go to my uh twitter instagram and uh you'll be able to see it there and what is so, your twitter because you have a new one right Yes, I have. Uh, it'll be gone soon. So this is what it is right now. Um, I'm actually I'm almost at 5000 followers trip. Yeah, I'm I got so our new one too. It's called so Fat excited. Dragons Production. Are you on here? No, I'm not uh, on it yet. I, I, I've I hired uh, Robin, just, our friend. I think you are and you're not telling anyone. Where? I'm what? Twitter? Twitter. Yeah, I'm not. At I've been all. surviving because I'm just keeping it to fucking like sports and fights when I, I get drunk. I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I just know. got to tee off on people. Yeah. It's like, I've been, you you I've been, can't do it because they won't let you. There's a difference. Yeah. You know You're what the hard up. thing is? It's hard, you know, because you know, Trip, you had a shit ton. Like going from 250,000 followers and a check mark to like 4,400, like you lost all your power. <laughs> You know, there's no more like oh, you can't just bully it, people. It's, it's like you feel like a fucking nobody. And every time I got to a thousand likes on Twitter, gone. one week later I was gone. Every it, time, every I, time, every time every I post the time. So I just I, and I don't even think it has that much pull anymore. Twitter, to be yeah. honest with you, because we I, left. I, I really <laughs> think about. I'm not kidding. I think from, it's us, Trip. I think it's me and you. Uh, I think anywhere from 20, 30, maybe even forty percent of of the of the accounts on Twitter are fake. Yeah. I mean, and the rest are pussies. Right. So I don't even think it, but it just feels like when you want to promote stuff that you're on there. Like, I mean, it's, I, it's worked for so long, right? Like, I mean, that's how we built our podcast. It's, that's a, how we built. it's dude. It just hits that, that fucking, right. it just works your, your, yeah, fucking it's like that drug. Conspiracy it's clit. Just like, yeah. Ah. I yeah, I just got to get in fights with people. I ah, just go to Chrissy T. Right oh, yeah. You're just flicking right. Twitter beans, dude. Yeah, it's it's easy. It's Tommy G returns on Twitter. Tommy and, G uh, returns. He'll never find you now. With yeah, I, I kept it real discreet. And then uh, uh, why don't you just go? Tommy G wants to be banned again on well, Twitter. Why don't you my last that? one. My last one was Jack Fuck's kids. That was the one that, that got banned most recently. I'm not kidding. And then uh, Instagram is create the mayhem. That's the so, one that's able to survive. So now that now that I moved all my premium content to Rockfin, which I, I want to get mm -hmm. cash daddies on there eventually, but now I moved everything over there. Uh, I don't use Vimeo anymore, right? Mm -hmm. And so I mean, Vimeo got rid of two of my channels for premium content. They they nuked two of them. So I made up a fake email, mm -hmm. and the email was women's history is our history at gmail.com right? <laughs> <laughs> just so they wouldn't even know who i was dude uh, uh, i would love that. to see it when these light bulbs go off in your head like when they happen like the mad scientist has come up with a way to get back in the game when it's just happen? it's so funny to see the difference between <laughs> tripoli and i guess this is because I'm probably every bad habit Tripoli used to have in living motion in front of him. And now he's like a father and a better person, but he's trying to, <laughs> meanwhile, I'm making handles called flaming hot pedos and Jack fucks kids. And he's making <laughs> women's history.com. So, same people, but very different approaches. 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's just like they coming after me and I got all these guys on the internet who just like play or hang because they can't get anyone to listen to their show. So they come mm-hmm. after me and it is what it is. But let's real quick get into this because, you know, Howie, we call Howie the boomer here and he's not a boomer, but because he likes to do the safe picks. And then we mm-hmm. got fucking transition down there and he's just fucking Run. I mean, he's looking for cum rockets on, on fucking AOL. He'll he'll go deep in that fucking anything to find a fucking profit. What do you think? Like, is I mean, I just feel like there. You know, stocks could be a Ponzi scheme as well, right? I mean, there's a lot of pump it's and all, dumping going on there. Fake. All that shit. I, bro, it's like, all fake right now. There's nothing fucking real right now. The this chart of the stock market since 2015 is the most retarded thing you've ever seen. It's literally a 45 degree angle going straight up minus a fucking fake virus dip to get Trump out. That's literally all it is. You have literally the worst guy for Wall Street in right now. You had t- t- craziest shit happen the whole time. It's all fake. This is all heading towards an absolute financial motherfucking apocalypse. And the biggest thing, yeah, there you go. There's the little fucking, look at that. That's, that's ridiculous. Since 2009, you got Obama, hardcore liberal. You got Trump, hardcore Republican. Back to hardcore liberal. The market should adjust based on things like this. You have everything in the market's fucked up except that COVID dip. But you're basically looking at a situation right now where they're just blowing everything up through the room. There, there is no logic. There really is no fundamentals. It doesn't matter. This is heading towards a fucking apocalypse. You're looking at fucking Bezos and Bill Gates all of a sudden getting fucking divorced out of nowhere. Like, yeah, that is crazy. Come right? on, dude. And then, just... then he shifted a bunch of money. Yeah, that's, to that's his why wife. They do that. they've been doing this shit for fucking 100 years. CEOs, when their companies are about to collapse, get divorced whenever they're trying to unload their shares and be discreet about it because you just fucking get divorced or you have some big life crisis. Then you have a reason to start manipulating and moving your shares in different yeah. directions. Yeah. Can you tell us your thoughts on Elon? Because we've been, uh, it's been a hot topic around here. How he's desperate to, not desperate, he's very uh, excited to buy puts on Tesla. Uh, and then, of course, now we have this Doge phenomenon, which was just looks like a massive, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news event yeah. that was a night ago. I mean, that yeah. thing tanked 30%. What are your take? Uh, what's your take on Elon? Now, did it, did it take or did people think that was yeah. the apex and then they just sold off? No, the whales came in and sold off. Yeah, it did. So, 70 so to 49 cents in 30 minutes. Yeah, the thing people need to understand with the buy the rumor, sell the news, everyone knows the fucking term, but I don't think they fully understand right. why that happens. Okay. And basically, what happens is there's liquidity issues when you're dealing with the type of size that these whales go in with. And you see it on the stock market, you see it in, you know, Dogecoin, whatever the fuck you're talking about, it's the same thing. If someone like Goldman Sachs wants to buy millions of shares of Apple, they can't just go do that because their purchases alone have to be filled in small increments and they're going to drive Apple up from 130 to 135 to 140 and they're going to be paying a premium on the way up. So the only way that they can get a discounted price, which is their target, is to create a rumor. And that's why they say buy the rumor, sell the news, create a rumor that there's something wrong with Apple. And they go and put it on all the networks. They get in Jim Cramer's ear. They get in CNBC's ear. They own all the hosts. Anyone who's worked on Wall Street within there knows that all these fucking people are just puppets, uh, just like they are in the mainstream media for the fucking cabal. But they just get a bunch of talking heads who know fucking nothing to go out and say there's bad shit about Apple. Everyone starts selling their Apple. They're the buyer. So you, they're the ones buying all that shit up because that's the only way they can get liquid at a discount because the price is dropping as they're buying. So when you saw the Elon Musk shit, and it's the, same, it's the inverse on the way up. So when you saw the Elon Musk shit, how everyone was talking about Doge to the moon, Doge to the moon, going into Saturday Night Live, I was talking to my boy Bill Rupp in the Discord. I think we have it recorded, actually. And I was like, guys, do not buy this shit. Like, wait, this is, this is a complete opportunity for these people to liquidate or fucking dump. And that's all it was. It was whales dumping. And that's why everyone's like, Doge is dead. No, you're going to see that quick explosive drop yeah, because they needed to unload, and then you'll probably see it fucking level. It's back gonna up. do this, dude. This, this is all it's gonna do. My buddy had nine grand. He made a nine grand profit. I'm like, sell it now, yeah. dude. And the sell thing it of- now because as soon as he hits Saturday Night Live, everyone's gonna be like, okay, this is the peak. Get the fuck out. Right. And-, and the thing you have to understand, though, after going through that, is that was proof Saturday night 
that Doge is 100% being manipulated and Elon Musk is involved. Okay. So Can that's we dig all, deeper all though with the Robin Hood issue, because as we saw with GME, people mm -hmm. couldn't buy or sell. And then we saw again with Doge about a month and a half ago, they couldn't buy or sell. People were literally on our live stream trying mm -hmm. to sell Doge and the button, the sell button was missing on Robin Hood. Right. Well, I mean, first of all, Robin How Hood. How the fuck does that happen? Why are I mean, you still on Robin Hood? Why were you ever on Robin Hood, dude? You're talking we, about we, these fucking non direct We preach that. Yeah, yeah, we preach that around yeah. here nonstop. So we're trying the, to get them off. And that is. Legal. That'll happen on Ameritrade. That'll happen on E-Trade. That'll happen on any of these fucking dumb fuck platforms that amateurs use. It's when you're on those platforms, they only have a certain amount of inventory. So once they run out of inventory, a lot of that is you know being lent out already to big institutions. Once they run out of inventory, they're not going to put themselves at risk. It's actually in the thing you fucking sign. Right. But the bottom line is if Robinhood already fucked you, what are you still doing there? That's your fault. And it just shows how addicted these fucking people are to quick money because they don't want to work for it, that they're going to stay on fucking Robin Hood. They don't no even what. want to take a four day break to have no, the money transfer they will not go anywhere. Sam, we talk about it all the time on the conspiracy side. These fucking liberals are so fucking brainwashed that it doesn't matter what happens. They're beyond it. It's the same thing with anyone. Dude, I have people coming up to me with $100 in their crypto account trying to teach me crypto. I'm like, motherfucker, I was throwing around millions of dollars in crude oil for fucking years of my life. Well, you're not going to teach me the stock market or the currency market, but they're addicted because this is their escape. It's the same way when you look at the fucking scratch off line at the 7-Eleven, there's not a single person on there who doesn't have holes in their fucking shoes. They're playing the dream. They're addicted and they ain't fucking going anywhere. I agree so more, dude. Robin Hood can more. fuck them in the ass for the next six years. I will, I will admire the fact that the irony here is that you're making your money in sports gambling because I was always in this world with, if you can't cap at a 65% rate or higher, you're not going to beat the Jews. And you're mm. clearly managing to make that happen. Uh, so Did you say crazy. beat the Jews? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I heard. No. Dude, the you can't Jews. say that's Jesus. The Jews. I'm like, God. The Jews. Jesus. So, so as somebody that's been on both sides, you are clearly seeing a, uh, a better ROI in the sports betting world. Mm -hmm. uh, is Tell us, tell us how, how you got to that point. Is it all analytics? Is it scalping and, uh, be, you know, taking different lines? It's, it's the same as any other area of life. Like the reason why a lot of sports gamblers and athletes tend to be conspiracy theorists is because we're natural contrarians. You know, I know me and yeah. Sam have talked. I am. A, Chris a is million times. transitioning. Yeah, a million times about a million different topics. By the way, just let me just put this out there. When I'm dead and you piss on my grave, Okay. I will not. Are, I will jerk I need off you, on I, it. I need you to to close with transitioning, and then you gotta stop saying it because we <laughs> can't do it eight times no, an episode because no, it's no. not a runner anymore. It's no. just a when we when we start when this show blows up when we get a bump from your death right because we're gonna get that <laughs> old death bump. have that fucking bump right and we do like oh Chris been dead for ten years I will end every time with any transition he went to heaven <laughs> as a lady boy and just let it go dude it's okay it's all right chris dude we're gonna be the most progressive fucking financial show out there we're gonna be the only one that has a, yeah. a fucking trans fucking person <laughs> on it. you can add a bank robber i can come on here every show oh, dude this is Let's like the back. best a, a trans a bank robber a, a fucking a twink and a <laughs> and a and boomer. Grandpa. I knew you were going to say that right away. Okay. And so let's talk to a bartender who's twitching. Let's get back to Tommy because I do want to know, you know, how. Who are your uh, picks, man? No, Can no, we no. We're not. That? No, we're asking. <laughs> do you listen? Yeah, what? I do listen. I know we got Howie for 10 more minutes before he has to go entertain it in some fucking shithole in New York. So let's fucking do this. And he's going to go play some closet for 20 people for a fucking trans that's going to hand him 10 bucks at the end of the night. Let's fucking go. People. Okay. Um, I'll give you the quick I'll give you the quick answer, Chris. The yeah. the answer is don't bet fucking favorites and don't bet oh, like just do the opposite. Like most of the plays I'm looking to take are underdogs and you don't have to be 65% if you're getting plus money on your bets and the yeah. props, the props. But are you middling props? I mean, are you grabbing no, it's like just, an extra I, five I, yards? I study, I study the analytics. I'll spend 35 to 40 minutes per pitcher digging into every single thing about 
their fucking being. And Vegas yeah. is basically just going, he strikes out six guys a game. This is a plus yeah. matchup. Make your strikeout number six and a half. So I can just drive probably a 80 to 85% hit rate on pitcher props. Um, yeah. We hit 30 of the first 35 this year. So, and, and then we get wow. limited and stuff, but you just got to know your niche. Like I don't yeah. have that edge on sides. I have little specific things that the daily fantasy C player in me gets. And those are the angles I exploit. I just stay away from the fucking mainstream shit. Cause then I'll you got to hit 65%. Everybody's got a woulda, shoulda, coulda. And my favorite woulda, shoulda, coulda is I had a, a 14 uh, team baseball parlay. It was a $5 bet. It was five to win 130 K. And yeah. I hit the first 13 and I had a hanger. You and I was, I wasn't near a book. That was the worst Jeez. part. I'd left. Take I left. I was number mobile. Yeah, no, I was literally mobile, but I, it was the Dodgers and the Rockies and it was a five to one game. And I had like a 50 minute sweat in a car driving. Yeah. And that it's, I mean, it's still the, my favorite rush and I didn't even hit. But, I had a, know. I had a, I was in the first ever and then I'll, I'll let you get to the picks and stuff. But yeah. the, uh, the first ever million dollar daily fantasy tournament. I could, I could send you the article. It's still online. I was going to win the million dollars in Vegas, the first ever million air from fantasy. And I had eight guys or seven guys in Coors field, the game that was at nine o'clock at night and everyone else had like four. I was a lock. I was on HBO real sports. I was getting interviewed by uh, Carl Cantania. Like it was over, like it was yeah. done. We were celebrating and a water main pipe broke outside the stadium in Coors Field. They canceled the game. I got zeros for all my players, and it was a $997,000 swing. Oh, wow. We're watching the screen, and we're just like, I'm literally, there's a documentary with my reaction to it where I was just like, you got to be fucking kidding me. I don't know if you're a card player, but I flop quads and lost in a no limit uh, $1,100 buy-in. That's my flop bad quads. Piece. What is that? Pornhub category? Four of a kind. He four, four, four dicks. Four, four dicks. Cocks. In the same time. Four times. All right. uh, let's get into it. How let's we get into go first. so because how he's got to go. Yeah. All right. Howie, what quick. are your picks for the week? Real quick, man. We crushed it last week. Sold OCGN at fourteen. Bought it back at eight. Crushed some calls on it. Uh, XLE busted up to fifty three. Man, DSX busted through four. I'm sticking with DSX. I've been pushing that thing that since it was two dollars and eighty cents. It's at four dollars right now. I think it's headed to five. I love the chart. Keep buying DSX. That's what I got this week. I'm also selling tomorrow. Neff gave me some, I, I bought some Pfizer calls on Friday and some good news came out yesterday on it. So I'm hoping that thing pumps tomorrow, get up 40, 50, 50% in those options. And I'll sell those too. It was a good week. It's a good week. Uh, real quick before you leave, cause I know we both hold PLTR. And BlackRock sold off a shit ton of it. Are you still thinking about buying um, OTM options on that? On oh, on PLTR? Yeah, it's got to hit 16 first. It looks like it's going to go down another two, three points. I really do think it's going to probably capitulate down to 16. Uh, so it's got another two, three points to go before I would buy calls. Uh, I won't buy puts on it, but. Um, if it does hit 16, I think that's probably a good base. Um, you know, that crazy, your favorite crazy ass uh, money manager, Kathy Woods, bought more on it. Hey, it's said, Mother's Day. Be cool. Yeah, well, I don't I even know, know if she that means. I, I don't know if she has kids. I think she probably likes carpet. But anyways, <laughs> uh, my point is uh, I would buy more when it goes to uh, 16. Real quick before you got to leave, because we don't really get into Twitter wars too often because we respect our readers. But you and I did get a little tag teamed by, ironically, uh, a Twitter handle by the name of Cash Daddy's 444. Yeah. Who wanted to talk some smack with me. And here's the thing. If you if you step to me, I want you off the wall if you're playing the wall. OK, <laughs> if you're going to come at me and start talking shit about shit you don't know, I'm going to ask you to throw the fucking money down. So just to be clear, Cash Daddy's 444, we do have a live bet. The action is $500 that Coinbase does not drop to 170 before December 31st. So that Thank is you. a live bet. I will honor it. And uh, good luck to you on that. But it's important you understand the difference between an IPO and a DPO. This Coinbase did not IPO. It was a direct offering. Okay. So there's no institutional money holding this back. These are people that own the product and have sold for profits, which is completely natural. 
And that's why I think it's settled and it's on its way back up. In addition to the fact. I'm going to say something, Neff. I agree with you on that. It's a bad yeah. And another thing with that kid, too. You know, I mean, you could tell that kid's a 20-year-old kid living in his mom's basement. They all in are. South, South Australia. Because he was trying to argue with me about something he had no idea. So then he, he went to his uh, his uh, encyclopedia and he pulled He went to uh, uh, Investopedia and looked up the term IPO. It's what happened. Right. No, and but by he, the way, he, he got it was invest. It was investment banking for dummies. That's what he pulled up, <laughs> and I and that's when I was like, "Listen, man, go back to getting your get breastfeeding by your mom because I, I can't even bounce back with that." I'm buying mom puts. Hot? I'm buying puts on Chris's opportunity of ever seeing that five hundred dollars. <laughs> exactly. exactly. You'll that's never exactly see that. What I said. Well, that's what I said. You're basically, you're basically drawing dead where you're gonna have to pay it or your brand's on the line. And you're never gonna fucking <laughs> yeah. get it. Yeah. That kid's well, never seen five hundred bucks. No, here's the thing. No um, and well, you gonna a, take his paper out money. Yeah. Here's the thing. We uh, we respect the action, and the action is the juice. I lost a twenty dollar bet to to the moon three over uh, Elon saying uh, Dogecoin um, yeah. over the weekend. So here's the thing. If you throw uh, uh, any bet at me, I'm good for it because uh, I respect myself and I respect the brand that is Cash Daddy. So you don't have to worry about that. Would you rob a, a bank if you couldn't pay it? It depends on how much I owe and how coked up I am at the time. And he wear high heels when he does it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my question. And I, I've always wanted to know this, Tommy, because I know, you know, you've had some struggles. Were you high when you fucking actually did this? No, no. Dead sober fucking literally just shitting my Dude, pants. he didn't go it. into it with a mask. He's yeah. working there. Imagine well, what I mean, coked out of your mind. Oh, man, you know your buddies are coming. <laughs> well, well, nothing, nothing. No, I mean, the reason We're I good. asked is I, I knew a comic that was a, a smash and grab uh, stick up artist and he got, uh, he robbed the Jack in the Box and he got, uh, he had the mask on and everything and he got so fucking high, he passed out in the men's room and fell asleep while he was there. Because he was on a four-day fucking. Sleep. I mean, he's robbing a Jack in Box. He probably yeah, didn't. I have, mean, yeah, it was inevitable. Kinda, yeah, and by the way, how easy is it to rob a bank nowadays, where you could walk in with a full mask on and gloves, and no one says a it's word? Beautiful. I don't know. I don't know how every weeks. bank isn't getting robbed. Oh, you mean with like all the Mission Impossible masks? Out yeah, there? Fact, you're literally like encouraged to go in there in full fucking yeah. coverage. Like, how is every bank not getting hit? All right. Uh, so, anybody else got any picks? I got to run, guys. Love you, man. Hey, love you, love Holly. You too, Thanks for doing it. Howie, hit me up. Let's Jersey grab a drink, City, man. Yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah, I do have a couple of picks um, because this is straight from the Discord. You know, obviously we've been sweating a lot of these young guns in the Discord, and you know, BG David smashed it with Shib. Um, I, am I like a- Shib. I like well, Shib a lot. Do we gotta get Shib up to a penny? And we're all fucking. We're going to Cabo. Si- seven figures. <laughs> okay, come on, get. <laughs> Thanks Let's for get keeping that it. thing Thanks. to a fucking penny, dog. Get it to a penny, and hey, we're all hey. living that life. Hey, Doughboy, let's settle down on the language, okay? Uh, well, I call myself <laughs> the M word. That's how I get erection. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> I can't forget. I forgot about that bit. And by the way, that is an urban legend going around the comedy community that you can't get hard unless the woman you're with calls you the N word. I, it's not legend, it. bro. It's the truth. <laughs> Everyone has their thing. I banged this fat titted Mexican in my car and she dropped a couple M bombs and then I nutted. And then, it, you know, it is my fucking cross the bear. That's all it takes. Um, okay. I'm going to stick uh, with chasing the hot hand. Uh, first of all, BG David, thank you for contributing to the show with your donation of SHIB, oh. which I am currently holding on to and will separate amongst the, the cash daddies. I will not pinch the bag. The gas fees are a little high right now, so I got our best interest in, in mind. Just know that. Bro. No, you don't. You're right. I'll pinch the bag. Oh, you <laughs> will pinch the bag. Uh, I am going to chase uh, Big Perm's action on oh, XDN. Perm. Yep, digital note. Um, I am also going to tell everybody to buy Coinbase and I've got a couple reasons as to why I kind of went over them all. Uh, I think it's settled. I think profit taking is normal on, uh, you know, a DPO like this. The other thing is I have a feeling after the fuckery we just saw with, um, Robin Hood, we're going to see a mass exodus again, because it's that fool me once thing. It's that old Bush fucking routine. He does so well. People have been burned. I think people are going to jump ship and they're going to start moving to the bigger players like Coinbase, Voyager, 
whoever. But those are the only two. Crypto.com, I like yep. a lot, dude. Yep. I and like to, a lot. To follow that, I'm still holding BYGVF, which is Voyager. I like them both this week. And then uh, on the crypto side, XDN, and I'm not selling my cum rocket. I, I believe in this project. A lot of people are giving me shit saying, you know, you're chasing a meme stock. It's not a meme stock, man. Go do some fucking research. They're putting out legit NFTs. And people keep saying- You just literally said that NFTs are fucking uh, organized crime, fucking money laundering. <laughs> You're damn right I did. And I'll tell you doesn't what- Doesn't mean you can't profit off it. That, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't mean somebody doesn't need a place to hide their money. But the thing people keep coming back to me, they say, Chris, what kind of idiot buys porn? Only losers buy porn. Well, you I know what? Dude, okay, go on. Go on, go on. I asked Yoshi this years ago. And if you don't know, Yoshi's been in the business forever. And I said, how do these porn companies stay open with Pornhub and all these companies giving mm. shit for free? And his one word answer was collectors. People need it. It's, it's art it's, for them. It, it, and, and if you look at these webcam sites, because I have a lot of uh, experience being on them. The, uh, the funny thing is you watch these guys and they will pay these girls who are stripping for the rest of us for free just because they want that personalized experience, right? They well, want yeah. the girl to say their name. They want to feel like they're powerful because they're fucking nerds in their mom's basement. So yeah, you'd be shocked how many people actually do pay for this stuff to own it and just- Have you heard it. this on the streets, Tommy? Is that how you know all this so I well? I pretty much jerk <laughs> off the webcam girls every night. I think so, everybody does, dude. I, I actually make them watch me, Trip. Like I'd yeah. make them stop oh, I working. I like that, dude. Yeah. Business model. Right, yeah. yeah. That's a great. Well, great. my whole thing is this, dude. I, why do I pay for porn? Why I I I I got away from it, but then I'm like, you know what, dude? I like people paying for my content. Yeah, so you're I contrarian. It's like, yeah. it's like, I'm just like the. I mean, regardless of what you think about them, it is an industry. I know you you know my theory, Tommy, that porn is the number one female sport on the planet. Okay, it blows the WNBA out of the water. The amount of money that it makes, and we should respect them for what they do. I know you know I know some people wouldn't want anyone in their family doing it. That's fine. But most of these girls are coming from hard lives, man. You know, whether it's bad neighborhoods or trailer parks, and they got a shot to make some money. And guess what? Some of them change their lives. And some of them crash and burn. Guess what? So don't comics. Guess yeah. what? So don't bankers, politicians, everybody. CEOs blow their brains out all the time. We're not talking about oh, we got to get rid of CEOs all the time. It's like, yeah, and I get it, man, that porn could have a real negative effect on people. That's you. You got to control it. You know, it's like, I think drugs should be legal. I have a problem with drugs. I think drugs should be 100% legal. I think they're poor people crimes, that and prostitution. Mm -hmm. So I, just because I have a problem with it doesn't mean it should, should be illegal. You know, like be a grown up and take, in, take control of your shit. It'll yeah. actually, it'll actually be more controlled once it's legalized because people will learn to do it. Respond. It's, it's the, it's the desire of that thing that's the forbidden fruit, right? That makes people go crazy over most of that shit. But to, to get back to the porn thing with you guys, it's, I'm uh, humble brag here, but I'm best friends with Lisa Ann, right? So, and and you see, I've gone to Knicks games with her. I've gone to you know all over the place with her, and these people are obsessed, right? Just to have their moment with her, right? The picture with her or get their autograph or whatever. So now imagine if someone's jerking off to a porn star and they worship that person to buy something from them or support them gets you one inch closer to possibly getting their attention oh, and yeah. possibly landing that. It's all that oh, yeah. dream. And, and it's, yeah, it makes total that's, sense. That's what I said. It's like a sports cards. Like if you get a vintage, like her rookie card, basically, Air Dude, quotes. If you People get a classic Belladonna just fighting black snakes like <laughs> Samuel Jackson, dude, that's gonna be worth some fucking cash. And you can so go the, to Twitter snakes now. on a, snakes on a skank. No, no, no. <laughs> that you know, you anyone who can get my 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 butthole is haunted. You're that's gonna be worth I, a I whole remember lot of money. It's actually called my asshole is haunted. I yeah, remember right. That. That's gonna be worth <laughs> a whole and lot of money. It's more than my asshole haunted volume two, which does exist as well. <laughs> well, they, the they tie card, up all the loose ends. It's the rookie card of, of haunted rookie assholes. Card. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, back to that. Here's my picks. I like Shib. Let's all get Shib fucking going. I know I picked the same things over and over again, but I'm telling you, man, 
I'm telling you, I'm really liking a lot of this shit right now, dude. I'm really liking. The, I know we you just got Maker? into coins. I like fucking Shib. I like Shib, yeah, but man. But did you just buy a bunch of Maker too? Oh yeah. So I mean, we didn't get into too much what we did last week. So my whole thing is that Maker has always been about a grand, two grand, sometimes double what Ethereum is. So I'm like, I, I on my Celsius wallet. Uh, you know, that's why I store a lot of my crypto so that I am getting that, um, getting that interest, you know, uh, on my crypto. So I thought, you know, what, man, I, I made a mistake and I sold, I sold, or I transferred a lot of my maker into a couple other coins I wanted because maker was just sitting there and then exploded. And a guy who had predicted that maker was going to get the three. I mean, that uh, Ethereum was going to get up to 3,000, just predicted it's going to get up to 10,000. Now, like I said, maker is always two grand or at least like a 30% higher than uh, Ethereum. So I'm like, okay, if, if I'm not selling my Ethereum and I'm just transferring it to buy a nice chunk of maker. I don't, I don't see that as a problem. So I did that. I took a fat chunk of my Ethereum and I, I, I traded it in for a uh, maker and I'm very happy where I'm at. I'll get my, I'll get my mate. I'll get my Ethereum back to where it was before down the line. But I, I, I think you're going to see maker sooner than later, get the 10 grand or even 15 grand. That's my, that's my opinion. So I like maker a lot. It's always performing well for me, always out doing Ethereum. And it's probably outside of Bitcoin and Monero, my my third favorite coin. Okay. What about Little E? So I have I want to keep an eye on Come Rocket, obviously. And then another one to keep an eye on eye on is Bonfire. So people who miss the miss the what is it? Missed the wave on Safe Moon or whatever. They're gonna to try to get on Bonfire. That's pumping. It hasn't dipped yet, so I'm assuming it's gonna skyrocket. Um, I have a serious pick though. That's Anchor. That thing has been stagnant for two months. It's between 16, 15, all that stuff for two months. I think it's due. Um, and also AMC, because Nancy Pelosi's husband just bought five million dollars worth in options or, or shares. I, I'm not sure. I believe shares, but he just bought $5 million worth. So he must know something. I'm not against that, dude. I'm not against that. It's we live in a world right now where the simplest <laughs> solution is the best one, right? Like where yeah. it's Occam's all the razor. money. Yeah. All and, the money. And I know you guys are from razor to me. Now yeah, I, I will I'm a because it's something people, I know, I'm a conspiracy it's, theorist it's, and I hate that. But there but you is. But oh, hey, no, hey, no, 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 hey, no, hey no. you can be a conspiracy theorist, but you still have to respect the concept of Occam's razor. Not everything yeah. is a conspiracy. Okay? Uh, brother, if you want to go another 45 minutes, <laughs> I'll tell you, everything's a conspiracy. Yeah. Everything. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, well, here's, here's, the, here's the beauty of it. So the thing that I'm looking at right now, and keep in mind, I'm not a, I'm not a coin guy, right? But uh, I can talk about it. I can get in. You guys know more about this shit than I do. Uh, just because... I have enough volatility in my life, right? Where I'm a sports gambler. I'm everyone's like, you missed the move on Dogecoin. I'm like, I just made five thousand dollars on you know striking out six batters in an hour and doubled my money. I don't think I missed anything, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I just have a different thing. Like, have you double your money in an hour like I just did? So I don't think anyone's ever missing anything. And like you just said, trip, you know, you fucked up, you made a mistake. That's part of it, you know, like and no one should ever look at it as oh fuck, I got in Doge at 20 and I sold it at 40. Great, you made a hundred percent on your money. You fucking destroyed it. Who cares if you missed it to 69 or yeah. whatever it is? Like, these are the lessons. And, and this is, you know, what, because uh, I want to get into this. Uh, I want to be on here with you more, Trip. We've talked about this a lot and more on the education side, right? Like teaching people who are new to this, whether it's crypto or stocks or whatever the fuck it is, how to just mentally manage this and, and understand what's going on. One of the things I'm seeing from more of an outsider is, the simplest, dumbest fucking thing. There's so many people who are simple and dumb who are involved in this, who aren't sharp, that those are the things that are en end up taking off, right? So if you look at this Cardano thing right now, I don't know if you guys have talked about it ADA, or, we know or what, your, right what uh, your take is, right? Yeah, a big chunky chunkies of okay. that. Yeah, I literally- Big chunky chunkies. I'm literally putting 
as much money as I can into this thing. I didn't even know you could only put a thousand into Doge at a time or whatever. Like that pissed me off when I turned away. Really? Yeah, I was. I wanted to unload. Where are you it. buying it on? I don't even know. I have a fucking probably Coinbase account that I just listen to the crypto. It's not on Coinbase. I think it's probably Binance you're buying it on. No, I haven't bought Dogecoin. You talking about Cardano or Doge? Oh, what I are you thought, saying? I you just Doge. bought a chunk of you. Cardano you is what I'm buying on Coinbase. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's not Coinbase. Yeah, Hold that's on. on there. I've never. So, they've never. Li- I just bought like. I mean, like, I'm not going to say the number, a lot of maker. They've never limited me on the amount of no, money. No, I'm I saying buy. with the Dogecoin, I was talking to my boy Trev, and he's like, I'm like, dude, I'm just going to buy a bunch of this shit because it's just going fucking crazy. It was at like 30 cents or whatever. And he's like, I tried to buy it. You can only buy $1,000 at a time. And I was like, oh, you fuck had to that. be on Robin Hood. And that, I just fucking the, literally ignored heard. it and thought that was a thing. And Probably. I just found out the other day that it's not. So, but this, the Cardano thing, there's a conspiracy theory behind it here, Trip. So you'll like this and it sounds like you're already on it anyway. Does it involve baby blood? Uh, we can make it involve baby blood. No, we can, no, bring no, it. We can cycle see, everything back to I baby just want to see Chris yeah. Swar- Squirrel. Yeah, the, uh, so Vegas Dave, you guys know who he is? Yeah, of course. By the way, you heard what he did with uh, the Mike Trout Super Fractor, right? Right. So I have a theory what? behind Vegas Dave. Yeah, go on. Go go. Tell he, bought, he bought the Mike Trout Super Fractor for, I want to say, $4 million and flipped it. What is eight. that? You act like it's, it's just common knowledge. Yeah, it's, it's a baseball card. Yeah, it's a baseball card. Bought it for 400000 I think he flipped it for $4 By million. the way, that that looks like you in a weird way, Tommy. Like, Don't ever like fucking your, say that again. That is that's your bizarro cool. you. Bizarro <laughs> you. So, so here's, a rug, bro. here's a fun story. You ready? Come on, dude. You look so, like you could totally do blow with that guy. I mean, dude, he's he's like four foot six, fucking f- nerd. So uh, hey, this, this this is coming from a guy who said the n word. We don't say those. Words. Oh, I say f- <laughs> fucking yeah. You got the wrong guy in here. That's it. So the uh, he just lost everybody, yeah, yeah. everybody. But do you so, ever uh, say him in the correct order and say like, oh, look at the? <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, that that's the way to do it. So Vegas Dave is the biggest shill in all of gambling. Okay, oh, he's shit. a complete Shots piece of fired. shit. He is a fucking loser. He's a punk. He bought 90% of his Twitter followers. He's a known fucking fraud. Like he's literally it's oh, known and I think shit. Shots fired. No, it's not even shots. Like it's a fact. Like that's who he is. He buys friends. He literally yeah. bought he literally had they had a whole documentary done on him how he's supposed to go to jail for fraud. And he's literally a known fucking fraud piece of shit. His girl that he was dating, Holly Saunders. I actually had an opportunity from a friend of mine who said, if you want to date Holly Saunders, you can. There's a price to it. And this is what it would cost. So his girlfriend was actually a paid whore. His whole life is fake. He's hey, being We don't back. judge here. We don't hey, judge. Real quick, real quick, Tommy. I don't know how deep your entourage rolls, but if you're ever looking like for a 38th wheel with uh, a three cats, I'm your man. Okay? Let's do it. Yeah, dude, I can get fucking. Oh yeah, well, Holly that? Saunders. I can, yeah. get, I can get anyone like that. Nah, she's tr- she's trashy too. But dude, the, I uh, want to eat her butt. So here's the thing. So I've had a conspiracy theory about <laughs> Vegas Dave because he was supposed to go to jail, uh, and all this shit came out and didn't even serve probation. Right? Oh, somebody. I flipped. think he is a front man for someone, something, or even the government itself. So the thing about him is he's retarded, right? So he has made these bold predictions, whether it was Birkin, whether it was the trout card, whether it was all this stuff and everything, this fucking moron who knows nothing about anything does. It turns out working out in their favor, which means he's he's the front man, in my opinion. So all of a sudden yesterday before or Saturday, before Elon Musk went on Saturday Night Live, he came out and said, right when Elon Musk goes and touts Dogecoin on Saturday Night Live, it's going to crash. And I know he's retarded because he had a picture of the green and red bars on a chart and didn't even know what it meant the night before. Okay, (laughs) so he doesn't know this. So someone's feeding him this. Right. And then he came out immediately after that and started pushing Cardano down everyone's throat. So I am of the opinion that someone big is behind him using them as a front man to pump Cardano. And I'm just playing it because I think there's going to be a quick impulsive boom because of this shill. And the people behind him, and then I'm gonna try and double, triple, and get the fuck out. But I, I'm gonna buy it that literally. Simple. I'm I, I will buy it literally after we wrap this show. Yeah, Holly it's, Saunders pushing it. should have run. Pushing Listen, it. someone's Holly, behind him. Holly Saunders could run a marathon. I'd still eat her butt. You should see her from fucking five, ten years ago. Before I don't care. I don't give a shit. I'll take fucking 
heavy miles, Holly. I, I do the same joke, but I, I take bike fucking... ride instead of marathon. <laughs> Just, just putting it. Is it so you saying Sam's stealing jokes? No, uh, no, what are you no. talking uh, Sam, about? That's, Sam, that's a big, that's a big shot fired Jesus for a comic. Shots! I give you a spot my show. And now you're. I don't sick. even think. I don't think there can be a bigger shot, Sam. Oh, oh my God! He's calling you Dave Cook right now. Oh my! God. Can we get back to so uh, to Vegas, Dave? <laughs> So where did this guy come from? Because he just popped up on my radar a year ago, and I watched. Oh, he's been a lot forever. Of, I watch a lot of high end breaks, and he bought um, of basketball cards. He bought an '86 Flare box, yeah. and then uh, he had like Irving on there. He had <clears throat> all these huge basketball stars on there, and yep. did a live stream of it. It's, and then you know he's back. He's giving back. Giving Michael dude. Jordan rookies away, and I was like, "Who is this guy?" I've been and studying him money? for a long time. So for a long time and he is the definition top to bottom i won't waste the whole show on it but just trust me i've done a lot of research into him i even know people who know him this dude is nothing more than the front man for some monsters behind him they use him to push yeah. product whether it was birkin or whatever it is so he's been around for a decade and he's been a fraud for a decade and no one cares like he doesn't care no one cares so i think this is just an easy impulse buy and i think it has to pop because there's no way whoever's behind him would do this unless it's either going to crash or pop and everything he's done has, but you're has looking popped for right a after. smash and grab. If it doubles in a week, you're out. Yeah. I'm just going to see the thing about me is with the, the volatility, like I don't marry these fucking crypto coins or anything like that. Right. Like if I'm going to get involved, I'm going to go in, I'm going to hit it. I'm going to get out. I'm not going to look at what yeah. could have been, what should have been, you know, it's like the fucking town whore, right? Like there's a lot of upside. It's a lot of fun. You know, yeah. you can end up doing blow off her ass in a bathroom and, you know, you come home, she brings three friends to suck the skin off your dick. Or the downside is that, you know, you fuck her and you don't call her back and you come home and she's boiling a fucking rabbit on your stove with a knife <laughs> in her hand, you know, and your house is on fire. Dude, oh. I would eat Holly Saunders' butt off of Auto Trader. Okay? <laughs> that's, that's two. If it's available on Auto Trader. Okay. <laughs> is that the third? Yeah, that's an the third. asshole yeah. reference for yeah. Holly. My man is Hey, dude, mad. I just want to drive the par. The, the I point think it's only like 30 grand, Sam. So yeah. I'll work oh, hey, you, wow. so, so I look at. I look at crypto and, and again, not to be condescending on it. It's just the way I look at it. I look at it as the town whore. I want to ride it. Fuck it. Get away. You know, I don't yeah. want to get caught. I don't want to wake up. It's worth this nothing. Is a Christian podcast, yeah. bro. You got the wrong dude on here. <laughs> <laughs> um, just going back to your theory about, cause I, we had this Two conversation. Minutes. Yeah. About That's all I need, like, Sam. Like it not being worth anything. When you say everything's going to just like poof, the switch is going to go out. Do you think that's the, the truth with, uh, ethereum and more importantly bitcoin because we have we have i mean wall street's in on it now yeah we're, we're I, mean, so, this up. I want Dude, to say something gonna, before you say yeah. this tommy yeah bitcoin can never go down to zero because they they say 20 percent bitcoin is lost, lost. It can't right. go to zero. So if this is scenario, because tommy's not the only one saying this, there are some doomsday people out there for sure. That will happen if they 100 percent <laughs> kill the internet. Right. That's and that's thing. where I'm going with it. So uh, you're talking to a dude here, Chris, who thinks fucking there's reptilians ruling the world. You fucking know, so, Klaus Schwab dog did a so, video where they're like, we will, the internet will come down. It will make look, it will make COVID look like baby time. So I've thought for a while since Ron Paul, I think 20 years ago, that there is going to be an internet attack at some point. Those of us that are old enough to remember the Y2K scare, right? That was yeah. bullshit. But I do, I mean, listen, I'm so deep into the conspiracy world that I really think the NWO is taking control and their end game is literally just to fucking enslave us. So when I say things, take it with a grain of salt. No, no, I'm, it's, yeah, I, but, I, I, but I, I do the think perspective. I think it's dangerous and if you just step away, forget Bitcoin going to zero or anything like that. That's if that shit happens, you better buy guns because the fucking world's ending. But and you won't care about your Bitcoin. So buy no, guns. Was, yeah, and guns. Don't forget ammo. the bullets. There yeah, you go. and the that's bullets, the bullets, ammo, and a generator, bro. That's money, dude. That's money. If if all hell breaks loose, that's currency. The currency is the guns. Gold. No son. one's gonna care about your fucking dollars or your Bitcoin. They're gonna care about your ammo. But. To, to wrap this, I mean, I personally think that we are heading towards a quasi doomsday scenario. So for me, I just see them. It's happening too fast and people are making too much money who know absolutely nothing. 
They're just funneling every asset onto the internet where no one owns or touches these things and everything is on the internet. Yes. And I just feel like if we did ever get that China internet attack, like they talk about, they wipe out the Fed records, like whatever it is, if yeah. that did you're happen- You're talking Tyler Durden shit. Yeah, like I'm talking, talking, yeah. Like, so again, again, this is like your 0. 0.0 something percent that me and Sam think is like 20%. But yeah. if, if this does ever happen, everyone has nothing that day. So like for me, I'm a diversification guy. So I'm good with having money in Bitcoin and Doge and doing all that. But make sure you're buying some gold. Make sure you're buying some guns. Make sure you own property. Like, you know, 20, 30 percent of your money, if you want to put it in the crypto market or the Internet world or the NFT world, bet, do it. Fucking let me ask you this. because Ali Summers, if it the shit's a fan, we're not going to talk about her. We're not talking about me. Anymore. I have okay. guns and yeah. gold. Yeah, and a copy of My Ass is Haunted 3. So you might be able to leverage that for some ass eating. We get it. Now, here, here we go. Tommy, I got to ask you this question because it's a question I ask of every single guest. No, um, I didn't get raped in prison. <laughs> <laughs> when we talk about diversification, my asset allocation right now is uh, uh, about uh, 85, 15. So I'm 85 in equities. 15 in stocks and of the, or 15 in crypto and of that 15 percent 10 percent of that is is bit bitcoin and ethereum okay um where is your money at if you feel comfortable in, yeah, in, okay. in sharing your uh, uh, your diversification yeah so i mean for me personally i have uh i've always been a big uh hard commodity guy right it's just old school that's just what you know buy gold buy silver so a lot of coins a lot of metals um obviously you know we talked Paper about guns or physical uh physical so I have paper too, but I want as much physical as I can actually get until I get to a point where I'm comfortable with it. So I'm still accruing that. Um, most of my money is in the market. It's funny because as the market was booming, the GameStop thing, I was in my discord and they were like, Tommy, you're missing it. Tommy, you're missing it. Tommy, you're missing it. And I just sat out in cash, didn't do a fucking thing. And Sam, I sent you the screenshot. I still have it in here. I made $430,000 short in GameStop in 36 hours live on my discord and then got the fuck out and haven't touched it since. So for me, I lay back and yeah. when I come in, I bring the cannons and I do it for a day or two and then I get the fuck back out. So I'm, I made money as mine well. stays in cash. I made money as well uh, on GME on the way up and on the way down. My question is when you bought your puts, were you buying lights or were you buying like uh, oh monthlies? I was so actually like, just short, I was actually just shorting the actual you, stock. Okay, so you were able to borrow shares. Yeah, yeah. yeah can you there. bleep that out, Evan? I'm going to bleep it out. Buddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what Thanks, are we Tom. bleeping out? I don't want to. Uh, uh, FDs. You, you literally <laughs> said it, the, the whole thing. Yeah, I know. And we can use the, the bleep button for the first part and delight, we keep open. It's not hard, <laughs> okay? We have the technology. Okay. So, um, all right. Tommy, hey, just Nef, stay you true. got seven minutes. Okay, you know what? You're getting fucking queenie today, all right? We are graced. <laughs> you're doing good, though, Neff. You had two minutes five minutes ago. Now That's you got right. So I am. Um, I, I keep talking. Do. You're going to we'll be in here. <laughs> limit my butthole references. Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, limit your minute references. Uh, this is this okay. time counter. Tommy, like if you don't yeah, mind, because we believe you can make money doing anything, and obviously you have a totally different system. One, I used to be involved in heavily. I used to be a book, and I ran a book, and it was awesome. painful, and it drove me insane, and I've got... 30 grand on the street, I'm never going to see again. I've been if on both sides. Yeah. If you don't mind, can you give us a pick in the sports world uh, for this coming week? Uh, so let me go. So because I am a daily fantasy player, most of my analysis and research, I do about six to seven hours of research per day on that day's slate. So uh, let me just look here for tomorrow. So I haven't done my research for tomorrow yet, but it shouldn't be hard to find. Question out. while you're thinking. Yeah. Have you ever considered the idea of a hedge fund within yeah. the fantasy community? Because I we think actually, that you could pull that off. Yeah, we actually tried it. Um, we were going to do it. There's a lot of there was a lot of red tape around it where they didn't allow it. Uh, they don't mm -hmm. allow lineup sharing. They don't allow people joining in and partnering. Like I actually got suspended for a while from FanDuel because my friend logged in on my phone and I logged in on his phone. So if it's it would be tough, you'd have to kind of do it underground. Yeah, I know people are already doing it, but uh, it, it's they don't like it. So it makes it hard um, to do it. But yes, we, we have another um, uh, 
stock that we're interested in around here and I hold it. It's called GMBL. Okay. And I'm curious to know if you know about it, but it's esports gaming. Okay. And where do you, are you involved in that industry? Yeah, we actually okay. have uh, esports. I have one of the top esports guys in the country as my esports handicapper is up like 35 units this year or okay. something. Just uh, So do you bet yeah. on these matches? I have. I don't know shit about it. Uh, I always joke with him. You know, he's a friend of mine. We fuck around like you guys do. I'm like, you know, you teach me, you know, Counter-Strike. I'll teach you what a vagina feels like. So I don't, you know, I, I fuck girls, so I don't play video games. But he loves them, right? By so, the way, he, I have the same joke in my act. <laughs> <laughs> stop, dude. So, oh. Stop. <laughs> he accused me queen. of joke stealing now, Trip. Fucking queenie. You should, yeah. Have you ever been on stage? Because you have a natural, uh, you know, Okay, do you guys want to get a chat you room together? And I mean, listen. Fucking I'm jerk down. each other off. I got four minutes, so I'm going. Okay, this is so, a chat roulette, you okay. two Momo. Oh, so Let's answer, fucking go with the, the fuck. answer. I think esports is a boom, for okay. sure. I think there's upside there. Um, there's only three baseball games tomorrow. So if I had to do anything just without any research, uh, and again, it's free on the site, go to number yeah. four deep bets.com use cash 100 and it's That'll free. Get us in for a week, whole, a whole week. You get all the picks yeah. a whole week. So, okay. but I would say, uh, Molly's strikeouts tomorrow, most likely number isn't even out yet, but I would look at that. And then, uh, as far Molly's as GMB, strikeouts, is that like Molly's game? Molly's the pitcher for the Reds. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, yeah. got it. Bro. So you're and just putting uh, the over under on the strikeouts. What is it? Bro. Seven and a half? Uh, they don't even have it out yet. But okay. uh, whatever it is, they've been low on him all year. So I've just been taking it. And as far Next. as G GMBL, I think you got upside to like 1370. Um, I, I Just glancing at the chart, it seems like it's more of a buy than a sell, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, no, I'm holding because I think it's got a great shot of being bought yeah. by DraftKings and uh -huh. possibly GameStop. Yeah, and the uh, chart looks good. The chart, the chart looks strong, being that it's you know kind of bottoming above the last. Uh, the circling last back around because I'm a big picture guy. You mentioned your connection with Lisa Ann, mm -hmm. and I know little E was mentioning Lisa Ann the other day. Uh, is there any connection with Come Rocket there, little E? I can't remember. I don't believe so. No. Okay, so I guess what we would ask from you, uh, Tommy, as a friend of the show, I think I can call you a friend at this point. Oh right? God. Jesus Christ. We're, we're going to be finger popping each other's assholes soon. So, so yeah. we're getting, lonely, we are so getting lonely. a lot. Here's the thing. <laughs> we're getting a lot of requests that uh, we, we need more females on the show. And we come off with some big energy. There's no denying that. If you have any female only fans um, or any, you know, oh, I have a fucking ton of them. Yeah. Yeah. Please put, put them on our radar because we want, want to bring minutes. the show open more so we're not 98.7 guys on the day. well i mean listen just just bring me on more and i'll bring chicks with me How we would that? love to have you back that was going to be my next question yeah. besides do you want to be my new, uh, okay. my new roommate you yes, know what i mean i'll be your new roommate i'll follow you on social media and then we can finger pop each other's ass so we're best <laughs> friends now right Yes, yes. Okay. With Thunder, Man, with Thunder Buddies. Quick to creepy, dude. That Thunder was Buddies so for life. Quick to creepy. Unbelievable, Neff. I'm going to teach this boy. My teach good friend, boy. Tom G. Teach this boy with prison sex. Like, we like, get out of Discord, man. Hang out and talk. Um, just no, so you know, we, we'll send you a, an invite to the Discord. Um, okay. If your name is one of uh, those great names, we will highlight you on the episode and we Make would sure love to get you in the rotation. So without further ado, let's get our shout outs out of the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, if you have fun with that, I have to go. No, 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 I no, have no. to go. They I have to live you. a life. Okay. They I have you. to live a Listen, life. Listen, man, this is important because you have one you. minute, dude. Okay. <laughs> one minute. Cash Daddy's DAO. We need your opinion on this. The Discord's hot. They want to get it going. I said, I will talk to Sam. I will talk to little E and I will talk to Howie. The only time we talk is on here. Because That's not true. That's not true, Neff. You are bombarding us with tax. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, like you're my mom because and I just went to college for the first time. It is nonstop. We talk all the time. What do but you we want? Don't, but here's the thing. Howie and I ask you questions, but you don't answer them. Like, that's what so that's the not question, talking. Nef? That's now, what all my you, guys say, Sam. Same now, thing. Like, if they just words me, I don't think cost so. money, you uh -huh. would be bankrupt. Okay. okay here's the issue. <laughs> People want to know, are we starting our own coin? They need to know this. Or Yes, okay. we are trying. I have to hit up that guy again. They said they would help me, and they ghosted me. So I would like to start. Um, I have multiple coins I would like to do. Yes. Okay. So we have some people that are interested, uh, specifically uh, Arthur Diamond Hands, in helping us do this. 
Okay, is let's do something? it. Okay, so I will tell these guys to get on it. We are in. Okay, I think that's <laughs> it. The only the only shout out I have is for Robin for Mother's Day. Thank you for everything you do around here for us. Um, we hope we're going to be able to afford you moving forward. And uh, I think that's it. Little E, you want to take care of the, uh, the housekeeping? Housekeeping. Buy the shirts. The shirts are on fire. They're just flying off the shelves. Go to the Discord. Subscribe to the YouTube. Leave a review on Apple. All that stuff. We really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. So, hey, can you end this? And then can we do a quick opening real quick, too? Yeah. Uh, with that? All right. Saying all that stuff, or maybe you could just make it up front, enjoy the show, and then say Tommy's going to be jo Tommy G's joining us. But get all that stuff out of the way mm -hmm. because I don't know how many people actually make it to the end of the oh. show. Yeah, I got it. I mean, the hey, buttholes you know and the racial <laughs> slurs and the homophobia. It's all getting blurred. If you're still with us, we love hey, you very much. You know what? They might hit the stop button on lizard people at like a minute, <laughs> an hour and 30. Trust me, this dude. This is a different kind Trust of show, me, bro. bro. This is a different kind of show. Bro, trust me. You just refuse to come to grips with that the fucking swarm listens to this. You need you know to know what? You, can, you can't come to grips with fucking four-syllable words, okay? So when you start doing that, we'll have an adult conversation. All right, guys. Tommy G, thank you so much Thanks, for Tommy. coming. Thank you, guys. Uh, I, I appreciate it. I thoroughly enjoyed the fucking man-on-man -man action between you and Chris Neff. <laughs> I hey. mean, there might be a new you ass to what? ass brother. To how he might be out, and yeah. we got <laughs> butts here between. Hey, you can never drunk. have an. You can never have enough best friends. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, You're my right. first, Chris. Chris, and I appreciate it. That got creepy. Final thoughts, Evan. Greek him I have no clue what that Nazi means. Don, yeah. Okay, guys, we love you. Thank you so much for Cash Daddies, supporting Cash Daddies. Buy them shirts and tell your friends about it so we get people listening to the show. It's one of a, one of a kind. We need more people listening. We love you very much, and, and uh, have a great week. Bank them fatties. Cash Daddies.